Hello everybody, welcome back to this video. Um, I'm very glad that uh, you're still uh, on this channel. Uh, sometimes I think to myself it's uh, kind of boring, especially in the first videos, but I'm very glad you stick with me and bear with me, see how everything is going. This video is again about my stay about South Africa. Now is the topic about my ambulance day, which I done there. Ambulance, I already told you about the helicopter ambulance. Now I'm gonna talk about much more about the ambulance on ground um, with those big ambulance cars and so on and so forth. I'm very glad that I could get the chance of a night shift that I could attend to. It was uh, very nice, it's been a big experience. The first step was um, Oh, of course going there and it was by Netcare and just to let you know the ambulance system is not necessarily regulated by the government or is governmental or something like that it's most likely private because of many other factors so Netcare is one of them and is uh, at the same time the biggest as I was told the biggest in South Africa right now and also my last video about the helicopter um, ambulance was also by Netcare so everything went by Netcare the biggest ambulance supplier in South Africa the first thing that I need to do was of course get, getting there it wasn't a big thing as long as you have a car that's something that I recommend to everybody who is going to South Africa it doesn't matter what you actually want to do there you need a car or you can at least uh, call it Uber, it's uh, every time a good uh, alternative. But just be sure that <laughs> there is only the driver in the Uber car. Because it's kind of shady and not very safe if there are multiple people in that car. As long as there's just one person in the car as an Uber driver for example, then it's gonna be fine. I went there, I needed to wait, wait uh, one and a half hour, two hours, I don't know how long for my superior to come because she was already on a call uh, somewhere on the highway and she was just a few minutes before I arrived was she already been gone so I uh, had to wait for a long time but when she has arrived I was very happy to see her she was a very nice young woman um, who is also already a paramedic in South Africa working already by Netcare. She's doing that for so many years and though she was very young, I think she was just at around my age, 26, 25, but she saw so many things already. Me and her, we could talk very well and I learned so many things about uh, this whole profession uh, in South Africa as a paramedic, which was very new to me, to be very honest, and uh, learned many things. For example, and we both laughed about it so much um, the exam or the study is much more physical than we actually thought because I thought they study only about the body the situation how you to behave in those situations so of course in the medical side too but I never expected that they need to do also physical tests for example running five kilometers in maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something very hard and I'm not a runner so I can't even uh, estimate if it's uh, enough or not enough, it's a struggle or a challenge or not so um, to me I was mesmerized because I never thought that a medical profession like a paramedic could be that physical that uh, we had a very wonderful start, she showed me what actually is in a whole medical ambulance car from Netcare from something that you expect from Africa, very advanced and has everything what they actually need. It could feel pretty safe uh, if you are someone who is uh, getting rescued by Netcare. So our first case that we went to um, after waiting for a few hours was a hit and run. That means a patient or a, or a person just got hit by a car and instead of uh, instead that the driver is waiting uh, for the ambulance to come or the police to come they just drove away and uh, the patient was um, all alone that's called hit and run in South Africa I think that happens a lot over there just for my personal opinion we couldn't find the patient because other ambulance already found him and took took him with them 
and they were already on the way to a near hospital so that was already taken over we were already on our way back to the base and waiting for hopefully a next so the next case that we are being called to was uh, somebody in Hilbro Hilbro is um, the most I could say dangerous area of uh, Johannesburg at the night time it's not uh, the area you should go to but this particular guy was there and got attacked he said by uh, many people even though his whole leg was broken we were um, stabilizing the whole leg gave him medicine and transported him to the next um, hospital that shows that how crazy dangerous Johannesburg can be when you just be in certain areas in certain times so it's actually a very nice city a very beautiful city too but i can't lie and say it's uh, completely 100 percent safe you need to think about certain things and prevent to do certain things just to avoid getting in situations where it could potentially be very dangerous for example going night at night in Hillbro is the best example there is no place to go there at night time especially as a tourist that's something that I really want to uh, express and tell you if you are already planning to go to Johannesburg it's a lovely city a beautiful city the people are so open and so welcoming but you need to be aware of the dangers that you could face so we got him to the hospital it was the Barrow hospital where i was working so it was very nice to see the doctors and the people i know it was a nice situation i really loved it but once we arrived there we got already the next call and that is um, by some weird coincidence already at the Barrow hospital we needed to get one of those patients from there from the government um, hospital to a private hospital I don't know how it happened or what the actual reason is but uh, we, do, we did it anyway we took the patient and uh, bring, brought her to a, a net care hospital a very big one and that's the place where she's been taken over and uh, being cared of and the last case of the night was a very interesting one because not very interesting medically but more socially there was a guy on a bar or something like that it was already been closed or a restaurant I couldn't really tell um, he was completely drunk and very aggressive and uh, just to check uh, his vitals he actually refused to do anything but we were so lucky that there had been a guy who for some weird reason he doesn't actually know him but this drunk guy trusted him so much that he uh, listened to every word he just told him something that really helped out we were taking some vitals how to see uh, how he's going medically um, with numbers and everything else and um, he's quite he he been very quite stable but was all the way very aggressive and impulsive is doing sometimes crazy things like punching around or just being verbally aggressive towards anyone so sometimes for a few minutes he was just sitting and doing nothing so it was quite difficult yeah that's uh, something that really comes with this profession even though you are a paramedic and it's not actually your field of profession but it still comes with the with this kind of work that you need to be a very social person a person who can help people in different situations can overlook uh, so such things because i know people who can get very <laughs> quickly offended by people who are um, telling this and that or using very insulting words person who is getting offended very quickly by that is not very shaped for this kind of profession so if you are looking for a profession like paramedic or doctor just be aware not every patient not every people you are going to be interacting is going to be very nice to you be a social person be a person who can overlook the flaws of other people and of your patients and um, just have a goal and work uh, work on it our goal with this drunk person who was aggressive towards everyone around him was just getting him safe to his parents yeah it's quite uh, it was quite difficult because we needed to ha wait for the parents in in the meantime he was aggressive towards us 
towards the people around him, to the police especially, and they needed to handcuff him because he was about to start fights. And uh, once the parents arrived, um, they told us that he got um, divorced just recently. Um, Ex-wife took the children away. That, that was his way to cope. Something that happens a lot. That's something that I want to tell you too. Something that you need to learn in life and that I learned in life too. Not to judge people very quickly. Because they may seem on the surface a certain way, but once you just dive beneath the surface, you, you, you see that it's not something you admire, the intentions or the reasoning, why people are doing that what you already saw on the surface, but you can at least see that that is not, lo not necessarily logically, but it's but it's reasonable. You see how it actually came up to this conclusion, to this surface. It doesn't make the surface right, admirable, or something that we need to promote, but we can see why this guy is doing what he is doing. It makes us seeing his this person not more as an aggressive drunk person all the time, much more like a person who is just being hurt, uh, a human being who is trying to cope from their circumstances and their situation. To me, a just normal drunk person, I assumed he's doing that by for a long time, it's just a part of his character, came out that it was his way to cope his situation. Even though I disagree with him 100% how he did it, but I can understand. And um, that makes seeing other people not more as enemies or people who are bad, but just as human beings. And uh, this is something that uh, may be finally <laughs> something you can learn from those videos. That's all it. That was my ambulance day. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it on the whole time. My superior, it was a great time with her. I could talk with her about many things. If you want to do those kind of ambulance shifters, I can recommend uh, you to go to South Africa and Barra Hospital. Those are, uh, you're gonna get to know people who are able to arrange those things. You can do it by yourself. Just contact Netcare, make an appointment and uh, just intru introduce yourself to them. And I think they are already been so used to, to get uh, students around. You're gonna find a possible way to get there. So that's all it. I wish you a great day and um, see you on the next video.